We are sick and tired of this shit. This trouble is not about me. It's all about the Niger Delta people. How many people? They are one, two, three, four, five. Out in the lawless waters, brutal gangs of Somali pirates are launching terrifying attacks, seizing massive cargo ships and holding their crews for staggering ransoms. From humble fishing villages, these modern-day buccaneers have become an alarming threat, outsmarting international navies with their daring tactics. Brace yourself for a harrowing journey into the dark underbelly of 21 saint century piracy. Let's begin. 1. Historical Context of Modern Piracy Piracy on the High Seas, a phrase that brings up images of skull and crossbones flags, wooden ships, and dangerous oceanic raids. While the romantic perception of swashbuckling pirates has been popularized by centuries of literature and Hollywood, the reality of modern piracy is a grim and terrifying prospect. Today, piracy is an insidious and rapidly evolving global menace, disrupting major shipping lanes and crippling international trade with daring acts of violence. But how did we go from the era of legendary rogues like Blackbeard and Captain Kidd to today's merciless pirate gangs prowling the waters of Somalia and Southeast Asia with cutting-edge weaponry. Piracy, as an act of robbery or criminal violence by ship or boat-borne attackers upon another ship or a coastal area, typically with the goal of stealing cargo and other valuable items, traces its roots back to the 14th century BC. Historical records from the Aegean and Mediterranean seas speak of the sea peoples who disrupted trade routes and plundered merchant ships. However, the golden age of piracy, which is most often glamorized in film and literature, spanned from the 1650s to the 1730s. These pirates frequently operated in the Caribbean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Indian Ocean, exploiting the busy trade routes between Europe, the Americas, and Asia. Their tactics were rudimentary but effective, relying on surprise attacks with cannons and small arms. The infamous figures of this era, like Blackbeard and Calico Jack, left a lasting legacy in popular culture. But what exactly led to the decline of these high seas adventurers? As the 18th century waned, so too did the era of classic piracy. The increasing naval power of European empires and the United States meant more patrols and better armed merchant vessels. By the late 1720s, concerted efforts by these naval forces dramatically reduced pirate activities, pushing them into the annals of history, or so it was thought. Fast forward to the late 20th and early 21st centuries, and we see a startling resurgence of piracy, though with markedly different characteristics. These modern buccaneers are not in it for adventure. They are hardened criminals motivated by brutal survival and economic desperation. Their weapons of choice are not primitive swords and flintlocks, but fully automatic assault rifles, rocket-propelled grenades and heavy machine guns, enough lethal firepower to easily overwhelm most civilian cargo ships. Their tactics involve swarming unsuspecting vessels with a blitz of high-speed skiffs, grappling hooks, and belts of armor-piercing ammunition. Eyewitness accounts paint a chilling picture of these masked marauders storming ship decks taking crews hostage at gunpoint while they plunder million-dollar payloads. But why did piracy resurface after seemingly disappearing? As global shipping increased exponentially, the vast expanse of the world's oceans presented numerous targets. Moreover, the end of the Cold War saw a reduction in naval patrolling in key areas, making commercial ships tempting targets for those living in impoverished or war-torn regions. What's particularly chilling about modern piracy is not just the severity of the attacks, but the implications they hold for global trade and security. The world relies on these waters for the majority of its commercial shipping, and any significant threat to this maritime traffic can have drastic ripple effects on global supply chains and economies. Piracy-induced supply chain disruptions can destroy economies and deprive nations of crucial goods. The psychological terror inflicted on captured sailors is its own form of torture. Many return home traumatized after months by their merciless captors. But how do we combat such a pervasive threat? The answer is as complex as the problem itself, 
involving a mix of heightened maritime patrols, international legal frameworks, and perhaps most crucially, addressing the underlying socioeconomic issues that fuel piracy. It's a scary thought to wonder how these modern pirates became so menacingly well-equipped and organized, seemingly out of nowhere. Part of the answer lies in the availability of modern technology and the dissolution of traditional coastal security in many parts of the world. Modern technology like radar-guided skiffs, satellite communications, and shoulder-fired missiles have also dramatically enhanced pirates' ability to track, strike, and overpower their targets at will. Or their target. This resurgence of barbaric piracy has not been uniform globally, but has spiked most ferociously in specific areas that we will explore in greater depth later. In these areas, pirate gangs are frequently aligned with militant groups or drug cartels. Their attacks demonstrate terrifying coordination and intelligence, able to sneak past naval patrols undetected before materializing from the shadows to ambush their quarry. Yet despite these hair-raising developments, maritime forces struggle to combat such an insidious, far-reaching and violently elusive threat. Now let's look at how the international community responded to this modern threat. The initial reactions were slow, as countries struggled to apply old maritime laws to new forms of piracy. Traditional laws were ill-equipped to handle cases where pirates used high-speed motorboats and sophisticated weapons. This legal ambiguity often resulted in pirates being released even after capture, due to the complexities of prosecution and jurisdiction. So, how do modern pirates continually evade capture and prosecution? And what does this signify about the international community's ability to manage and mitigate such threats? These questions highlight the ominous nature of the struggle against piracy, a battle not just against individual pirates, but against a widespread and deeply ingrained issue that is as much about international law and global economics as it is about crime on the high seas. 2. Recent Threats, Somalia the tranquil waters of international shipping lanes hide a terrifying reality that has re-emerged with shocking force. Pirates, wielding modern weaponry and driven by desperation, are once again making headlines, casting shadows over the waters from Somalia to Southeast Asia. In 2024, the International Maritime Bureau reported a concerning rise in piracy incidents, indicating that this new wave of piracy is a terrifying nightmare for the global shipping industry as these modern-day pirates have become more sophisticated and daring in their operations. The waters off Somalia have emerged as a terrifying hotspot of modern piracy. Just this year, pirates executed a bone-chilling operation to seize the MV Abdullah, a 55,000-ton bulk coal carrier sailing under a Bangladeshi flag. Without warning, up to 20 heavily armed pirates swarmed the vessel from multiple skiffs as it transited from Mozambique, to the UAE. Crew members recount the sheer horror of being violently overwhelmed by the camouflaged raiders indiscriminately spraying automatic gunfire and rocket-propelled grenades to force compliance. The bloodied, captured sailors were bound at gunpoint as the ruthless criminals made off with the $30 million payload and their hostages. This event is not an isolated incident, but a clear signal that Somali pirates are regaining their foothold in the region. Pirate gangs originating from the poverty-stricken coastal towns have now become highly modernized, coordinating strikes from lawless inland camps using reconnaissance skiffs, night vision equipment, satellite tracking, and an arsenal of heavy weaponry. Their attack methods are as insidious as they are violent. Heavily armed pirate crews will launch a swarm of smaller assault skiffs from a requisitioned mother ship lying in wait along the vital shipping lanes. Striking with strategic speed and force, they aim to overwhelm and board cargo vessels, incapacitating the crew and making off with the lucrative haul and any potential hostages before escaping back into the ungoverned badlands. The economic impact is also staggering. Piracy has disrupted regional trade to the tune of billions annually, while stoking fears of potential terror strikes or hijackings of oil tankers that could trigger an environmental calamity. Global navies have marshaled patrol forces, but are reserving tactics like preemptive strikes for fear of escalating violence and putting more innocent lives at risk. With pirate gangs accumulating large sums of money from ransom payments, they are able to build an increasingly large stash of weapons, transforming from disorganized thieves into well-equipped maritime militias. Truly, 
The rise of Somali piracy represents one of the most menacing threats faced by the world's maritime powers in the 21st century. 3. Recent Threats – Gulf of Guinea Similarly, the Gulf of Guinea remains the most dangerous in the world for maritime operations due to the frequency and severity of pirate attacks. This stretch of the Atlantic Ocean off West Africa's coastline has emerged as bloody hunting grounds for ruthless criminal syndicates waging an escalating campaign of maritime terrorism. Over just the past year, there have been over 40 reports of ships coming under attack from heavily armed pirate gangs in these waters. The incidents read like something from a terrifying action thriller. Massively outgunned cargo crews fending off coordinated assaults by ex-militia fighters wielding rocket launchers, grenades, and assault rifles. Perhaps most terrifying are the increasingly frequent cases of pirates successfully boarding and kidnapping entire crews for ransom. In these hair-raising scenarios, upwards of 30 hostages can be taken at gunpoint and transported to heavily fortified jungle camps deep inland to await their horrific fates. One such appalling incident occurred in December 2022, when the tanker Hafnia Rhodus was ambushed 245 miles off Nigeria. Despite evasive maneuvers, the ship was swarmed by two pirate skiffs unleashing a blitzkrieg of gunfire and explosives to blow open access points. The terrified crew could only cower as a force of 26 heavily armed criminals swarmed aboard, subjecting them to hours of torment at machine gun point before fleeing with 15 hostages. For those unlucky enough to be kidnapped, the nightmare is only beginning. Ransom's demands can soar into the millions while captives are subjected to torture, starvation, and execution-style killings if demands aren't met swiftly. Photos of bound and bloodied hostages have become a gruesome calling card used by pirate gangs to further terrorize shipping companies into compliance. The economic toll is equally staggering, with maritime operations grinding to a halt as shipping firms reroute around the deadly zone at a cost of billions annually to avoid the kill zone. Anxious crews are now drilling for pirate attacks with the same level of preparation as for fire, flood, or abandoned ship scenarios. Moreover, Oil companies have been particularly hard hit, as pirates target petrol platforms and tankers with sophisticated capabilities like launching piracy castings. Pre-scouted kidnapping operations meticulously planned with shared intelligence and heavy armaments. In one particularly brazen assault, five pirates were killed in a firefight as they attempted to take control of an offshore rig after disabling systems with an anti-tank missile. With stability deteriorating across the Gulf nations, there are grave fears that piracy could spread into a full-blown insurgency, empowered by tens of millions in ransomed cash used to acquire weapons, recruit more fighters, and potentially coordinate with religious militant groups also active in the region. 4. Recent Threats – Southeast Asia The Malacca Strait has become a maritime killing zone where pirate gangs rule with impunity turning these crucial shipping lanes into a WPRD of terror. This 550-mile choke point linking the Indian and Pacific Oceans has emerged as ground zero for some of the world's scariest hijackings and robberies at sea. Despite robust joint patrol efforts by Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, violent attacks against shipping remain rampant and increasingly brazen. Over just the past year, there have been dozens of reported pirate attacks in the Strait and surrounding Indonesian-Malaysian waters. But the reality is likely far worse, with many incidents going unrecorded to avoid scrutiny and costly delays. In a particularly harrowing incident last year, the supertanker Bright Infinite was set upon by a swarm of masked raiders firing tracer rounds and RPGs as it transited the Singapore Strait. As smoke filled the bridge, the terrorized crew could only cower as boarders swarmed over the railings, pillaging the vessel of cash and valuables at gunpoint before vanishing back into the night. Opportunistic attacks are just one dimension of the piracy plague gripping these waters. Southeast Asia is also grappling with highly organized and well-financed pirate outfits running sophisticated theft rings using mapped shipping data, inside informants and covert motherships to carry out precisely timed heists of everything from consumer goods to millions in high-value cargo like gasoline, electronics, or precious metals. 
At the core are powerful criminal syndicates exploiting local poverty to evolve from small-time bandits into maritime militias. Operating from rusty motherships, they can rapidly deploy swarms of machine gun and RPG-equipped skiffs primed to attack any high-value target. The human toll is particularly grisly, with captured sailors facing torture, sexual assault and violence if ransom demands aren't swiftly paid. Some reports indicate pirates have even begun deploying child operatives masquerading as customs agents to enable ambushes. Some of these syndicates possess military-grade equipment and state-level intelligence, like in the chilling case of the Singapore-based masker Apache Energy, which saw its offshore oil rig suddenly commandeered by a well-trained extraction team brandishing assault weapons. Despite a firefight with naval security, the pirates managed to loot the rig of equipment, supplies and data representing over $10 million in losses. Regional patrols have increased, but pirates match them with counter-surveillance and escalating firepower, leading to intense gun battles where naval ships have been crippled. In one prolonged 2021 confrontation, Malaysian SWAT units were called in to retake a hijacked tanker after its crew attempted mutiny. The fear is that this piracy epidemic could spawn a full-blown maritime insurgency fueled by tens of millions in black market profits, catalyzing even more piracy, terrorism, and trafficking across porous borders. Perhaps most disconcerting of all is mounting evidence that piracy operations are becoming intertwined with broader insurgent groups like the Islamic militant factions wreaking havoc across the region. There are credible reports that millions in ransom payouts to release crews are being funneled into guerrilla movements, providing funding for weapons, recruitment, and disastrous events like the recent Jolo Cathedral bombing. With hotspots like the Singapore Strait seeing up to 10 attacks monthly, it's clear that despite naval efforts, Southeast Asia's piracy crisis shows no signs of abating, escalating into a grave existential risk to the region's economic and national security. 5. Tactics and Technology Used by Modern Pirates Today's pirates use sophisticated tactics and technologies that would rival some small national militaries, employing a range of strategies that are both innovative and chillingly effective. Let's delve into the advanced tactical maneuvers and the modern arsenal at the disposal of these maritime marauders. One of the most significant tactical evolutions in modern piracy is the use of motherships accompanied by smaller, faster skiffs. Motherships are typically larger, commandeered vessels that can operate far from the coast, serving as mobile bases from which pirates launch their attacks. These motherships enable pirate gangs to extend their operational reach into the high seas, far beyond their territorial waters, making international waters perilous for unsuspecting vessels. The motherships often carry several skiffs, which are small, fast boats designed for quick attacks and easy escapes. The use of skiffs allows pirates to rapidly approach target vessels undetected, often under the cover of night. Once close, pirates deploy grappling hooks and ladders to board the ships swiftly. This method enables pirates to mount surprise attacks, overpower the crew, and take control of the vessel within minutes. The agility and speed of the skiffs make them difficult to detect and track, often giving pirates the upper hand against larger, slower-moving commercial vessels. The weaponry used by modern pirates is another aspect of their operations that underscores their lethal efficiency. Gone are the days of cutlasses and pistols. Today's pirates are armed with automatic weapons, such as AK-47 assault rifles, and in some cases, rocket-propelled grenades, or RPGs, these weapons not only allow them to execute attacks with devastating effectiveness, but also to intimidate and control the crew members quickly. Automatic weapons provide the firepower necessary to sustain prolonged engagements and to fend off any potential rescue attempts by security forces. Meanwhile, RPGs are particularly favored for disabling a ship's communication and navigation systems, making it impossible for the crew to call for help or escape. This level of armament has transformed piracy from a mere maritime nuisance into a significant international security concern. Modern pirates also employ a variety of attack methods that reflect their strategic planning and understanding of maritime operations. They're known to carefully select targets based on cargo value, vessel itinerary, and defensive capability. 
Intelligence is gathered through various means, including monitoring maritime communications and using informants in ports who provide details on ship movements and cargo. Pirates often execute coordinated attacks involving multiple skiffs, sometimes under the guidance of spotters on the mothership, who direct the operation via radio communications. This coordination ensures that pirates can simultaneously attack different parts of the vessel, overwhelming the crew and securing the ship quickly. Furthermore, pirates have adapted to countermeasures employed by shipping companies. For instance, in response to ships traveling at higher speeds to evade pirate skiffs, Pirates have started using more powerful and faster boats that can chase down these vessels. They also deploy tactics like fake distress calls or posing as fishermen to lure ships into slowing down or altering course, making them easier targets. The chilling efficiency of modern pirates, equipped with military-grade weapons and employing guerrilla tactics, has made them an unprecedented threat on the high seas. Their ability to strike with precision and escape with impunity poses not just a threat to the safety of seafarers, but also to international trade and security. The question remains, how can the international community effectively combat such a well-armed and elusive enemy? 6. Economic and Social Drivers of Piracy The murky waters of modern piracy are not just navigated by the ruthless or the criminal out of sheer malevolence, but often by those pushed to the brink of despair by economic and social turmoil. The decision to turn to piracy is seldom made lightly. It is frequently a desperate response to dire economic circumstances and stark lack of opportunities, particularly in regions like Somalia and the Gulf of Guinea, where political instability and poverty run rampant, piracy becomes a grim livelihood for many. But what drives so many to this perilous way of life? And how have global economic disruptions, such as those caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, influenced these trends. In Somalia, the collapse of a central government during the early 1990s left its coastal communities with scant economic opportunities and little means for survival. With the country's institutions in ruins, its extensive coastline became a lawless zone, perfect for the inception of piracy. The local fishermen, initially aiming to protect their waters from the illegal fishing and dumping by foreign vessels, eventually saw piracy as a more lucrative venture, given the high rewards involved in hijacking commercial ships. Thus, a fisherman struggling to make ends meet might view the potential million-dollar ransom from a single hijacking as a transformative fortune. The Gulf of Guinea presents a similar narrative but with its own unique drivers. The region's oil wealth generates significant maritime traffic, which presents a tempting target for piracy. Here, piracy is also driven by economic disparity and the corruption endemic within the political systems of the region. Many involved in piracy come from impoverished backgrounds, with few job prospects outside of illegal activities. The wealth generated by oil does not trickle down to these communities. Instead, it often lines the pockets of the politically connected, leaving coastal populations in poverty and making piracy an appealing option, albeit dangerous and morally fraught. The impact of global economic disruptions, especially those triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic, has further exacerbated these issues. The pandemic led to a sharp decrease in global trade, straining economies worldwide and especially hitting hard the already vulnerable regions. For communities reliant on fishing or market trading, the restrictions imposed during the pandemic meant reduced catches and fewer markets were available, leading to increased poverty. With ships idling off coasts, sometimes abandoned by economically strained shipping companies, they became even more tempting and accessible targets for pirates. The economic hardship brought about by the pandemic has seen a corresponding rise in piracy activities, as more individuals view the high seas as a venue to escape the shackles of poverty. The desperation bred by economic instability leads to more aggressive and daring attacks, as pirates have less to lose and more to gain with each venture. Moreover, the lure of piracy is not merely a testament to individual desperation, but reflects broader systemic failures. The regions most affected by piracy often suffer from weak governance, where law enforcement is inadequate and penalties for piracy are inconsistently applied. This governance vacuum not only makes piracy a feasible option, but also diminishes the risks involved, emboldening would-be pirates. 
As we peel back the layers of modern piracy, it becomes evident that beneath the surface of this global menace lies a complex interplay of economic desperation, social inequities, and systemic failures. Addressing piracy means grappling with these underlying issues, steering potential pirates toward more hopeful and law-abiding horizons. 7. International Responses to Combat Piracy The international response to the escalating threat of modern piracy has evolved into a sophisticated array of naval coalitions and task forces, showcasing a determined global effort to safeguard the crucial arteries of maritime commerce. These multinational efforts reflect a deep understanding of the complex nature of piracy and the need for a coordinated strategy to mitigate its impacts effectively. Let's explore how these international bodies operate and delve into some of their most significant operations, such as those undertaken by the Combined Task Force 151. The backbone of the international response to piracy consists of several key naval coalitions and task forces that operate across the world's most piracy-prone waters. These include the Combined Task Force 151, the European Union Naval Force, and NATO's Operation Ocean Shield. Each of these forces has a specific mandate, but collectively, they share the common goal of deterring piracy and securing international shipping lanes. CTF 151, specifically, is a multinational task force that was established in January 2009 as part of a larger multinational maritime effort known as Combined Maritime Forces. Based out of Bahrain, CTF 151's primary mission is to deter, disrupt, and suppress piracy, ensuring that the maritime environment is safe for commerce and navigation in the vast expanse of the Gulf of Aden and Somali Basin, regions notorious for pirate attacks. CTF-151 has been instrumental in several high-profile anti-piracy operations. One of its hallmark approaches includes the use of patrol aircraft and warships to escort and defend merchant vessels transiting through high-risk areas. These military assets are equipped with advanced surveillance and defensive technologies capable of detecting and responding to pirate threats long before they can pose a real danger to commercial ships. One notable operation by CTF-151 involved the dramatic rescue of a commercial oil tanker that had been seized by Somali pirates. Using a combination of airborne surveillance and coordinated naval responses, the task force successfully intercepted the pirate group, freed the hostages, and apprehended the pirates, all without any casualties. This operation not only showcased the tactical effectiveness of CTF-151, but also served as a stern warning to other pirate groups about the international community's resolve to combat piracy. Furthermore, these coalitions also engage in soft power strategies, such as training local naval forces in affected regions to enhance their capacity to deal with piracy themselves. For instance, CTF-151 has worked extensively with the navies of Somalia and Yemen, providing them with the training and resources needed to patrol their own waters more effectively. The outcomes of these international efforts are telling. The presence of these naval coalitions has led to a significant decrease in successful pirate attacks over the years. According to reports, pirate attacks in the Horn of Africa have dropped dramatically since the peak of the crisis in the early 2010s, illustrating the effectiveness of these concerted efforts. These eight technological advances in maritime security. Today, there are also a number of technological innovations that have become the front line of defense against the persistent threat of piracy. These technological tools not only enhance the ability to monitor and respond to threats, but also fundamentally shift the dynamics of maritime security, providing unprecedented levels of precision and foresight in protecting vessels and their crews. Artificial intelligence systems are now being employed to analyze vast amounts of data from various sources, including radar, satellites, and historical shipping records, to identify patterns and predict potential pirate activities. These systems can forecast the likelihood of piracy in specific regions by assessing factors such as political instability, typical pirate routes, and economic conditions. For instance, an AI model might predict a heightened risk of piracy near a conflict zone, 
or in waters where illegal fishing has depleted local resources, prompting desperate measures by local communities. One notable application of AI in combating piracy is its integration into surveillance systems on ships. These AI-enhanced systems can automatically detect small skiffs commonly used by pirates, distinguishing them from normal traffic and alerting the crew much earlier than traditional methods. This early detection is crucial, allowing ships to implement defensive measures or alter their course to avoid confrontation. Satellite technology has also revolutionized maritime security by providing comprehensive monitoring capabilities over the vast and previously ungovernable open seas. Modern satellites equipped with high-resolution cameras and night vision capabilities can monitor ship movements across the globe, providing real-time data to naval forces and shipping companies. This surveillance is crucial not only for tracking known pirate ships, but also for observing maritime traffic patterns and identifying anomalies that may suggest pirate activity. The integration of AI and satellite technology has led to the development of sophisticated maritime security platforms that offer a comprehensive approach to threat detection and response. These platforms combine real-time data from multiple sources, providing a holistic view of potential threats. For example, by correlating real-time satellite imagery with AI-driven behavior analysis, these systems can alert nearby naval patrols to suspicious activities, significantly reducing response times and increasing the chances of intercepting pirates before an attack occurs. Moreover, drone technology is being increasingly used in conjunction with these systems to provide an additional layer of surveillance and response capability. Drones can be deployed quickly to investigate suspicious vessels identified by satellites or AI systems, providing visual confirmation and detailed intelligence without risking human lives. Despite these successes, the battle against piracy is far from over. Pirates continue to adapt their strategies, using more sophisticated technology and tactics to evade capture. Additionally, the root causes of piracy, mainly socio-economic instability and lack of substantial economic opportunities, remain largely unaddressed in many pirate-prone regions. How does the international community continue to evolve its response to meet these changing tactics? What more can be done to address the underlying conditions that fuel piracy? These are critical questions that require ongoing attention and commitment. The high seas may never be entirely safe from the threat of piracy, but with concerted international effort, they can be made much safer. Thanks for watching another episode. Click the next video on your screen for more.